Hello and welcome to UniversityofShed.net. This lecture is taken from University of Shed's psychology series and is on the id, the superego and the ego. According to psychoanalyst Sigmund Freud, human beings are the products of competing forces deep within our own psyches. Our personalities represent the varying degrees of influence of the three interacting systems found within our minds. The specific functions of the id, the superego and the ego are perhaps understood more clearly by the original German terms used by Freud, which were, respectively, das S, the it, das über ich, the over I, and das ich, the I. Firstly, the id. Freud believed that the id was the oldest part of the mind, present at birth, from which the other structures emerge. Freud called the id the dark, inaccessible part of our personality, which has no organisation and strives only to bring about the satisfaction of the instinctual needs subject to the observance of the pleasure principle. In short, its primary drive is the avoidance of pain and the seeking of gratification, with an emphasis on the first of these points. Like an infant, its purpose is to sate its own needs and desires, knowing no judgments of value and not differentiating between good and evil. The superego develops as the child realises that they are not the centre of the universe and becomes socialised, acquiring cultural and ethical ideas. In its desire to act in a socially appropriate manner, the superego can be considered the opposite of the id. The superego controls our sense of right and wrong, helping us to live within society. This sense will often stem from our parents, or other parental figures or authorities, acting as a kind of moral police. The superego is divided into two parts, namely the ego ideal and the conscience. The ego ideal includes the rules and standards of good behaviour. At first, this is what the child's parents approve of or value. The conscience, however, is sometimes known as the inner voice and constitutes that which is considered wrong behaviour. The ego represents reason and common sense, i.e. secondary processes, unlike the primary processes of the id. The ego is the go-between between between the id, the realm of the illogical, and the superego, the realm of the ideal, as well as the external world. Freud likens the the ego's relation to the id as being like a man on horseback who has to hold in check the superior strength of the horse. The ego is thus primarily concerned with self-preservation. Consciousness resides within the ego. It is used to represent traits such as judgment, tolerance and control. The ego enables us to organise our thoughts and by this to understand the external world. In its attempts to reconcile the demands of the id, I want X now, with the perorations of the superego, X is wrong so don't do it, the ego may employ unconscious defence mechanisms such as denial, displacement, projection and sublimation. The ability of the ego to do this effectively is called ego strength. With good ego strength an individual is able to effectively manage this. With weak ego strength there may be a lack of balance. Understanding the different impulses of the three components of the psyche can perhaps be seen most clearly with an example. Imagine that there is a piece of chocolate cake in front of you, but you have been on a diet. The id will be telling you to eat it immediately because that is what will make you the happiest. The superego, meanwhile, will be counselling you not to, as this is clearly wrong behaviour. The ego is busy vacillating between these two entities to achieve a compromise. Therefore, for Freud, a healthy personality is represented by a balance between the forces of the id the ego and the superego. If the id is dominant in an individual, they may be focused too closely on themselves and therefore uncaring to others. If the superego is overbearing, then the individual may feel guilty all the time or else have a saint complex. If the ego is too strong, the individual may be rational and efficient, but also cold and distant.